a previous NASA temporary worker cases to have evidence that the Apollo 11 moon arrivals were faked when she worked at the office a couple of decades back. At the point when Cindy Holland landed a position at NASA, she was over the moon. Figuratively obviously, not in the way she trusted the space explorers of the time or as they pootled around on the International Space Station. I was an undergrad and janitor for the U.S. Air Force when I connected for the contractual worker position with NASA, she relates. It was the winter of 1996, I was a single parent to a five-year-old kid and was endeavoring to get into a profession. I was told by a few Air Force workers that NASA needed to employ ladies and dark individuals, so I sent them my resume. Inside days, Cindy had a meeting and, in the blink of an eye a short time later, was offered a vocation. It was a section-level IT support position, she says. I was excited and unnerved. Cindy adored her activity. I felt critical out of the blue. The activity was novel and fun. I dealt with the PC go-down framework, logged in convenience calls, dealt with the plotter machine from the SR-71 flights, introduced programming on clients' machines and set up together PC stations. Cindy's office was ideal beside the NASA photograph lab. That is the place the photographic history was kept, clarifies Cindy. It was forbidden to most NASA workers unless escorted. Being arranged beside the lab, she frequently heard the experts and picture takers talking while they worked. One evening, she caught two photograph lab professionals talking about the Apollo 11 moon arriving of 1969. I could hear each word they said, claims Cindy. It was just when I heard one of them say I can't accept everybody on the planet succumbed to it. Clearly everybody can see it was all phony, one major lie that my ears pricked up. Regardless of the shocking idea of this disclosure, vocation disapproved of Cindy, 28 at the time, fascinated in her work and not needing risk or activity at all, chose to forget about it. I don't know whether they knew I could hear them, on the off chance that they needed me to hear them. Yet they were being intense about it. I thought they were insane and brushed it off. It was just significantly later, in 2009, that the story sprang to Cindy's mind yet again. I began to wind up noticeably mindful of what was happening on the planet and started to investigate different tricks. It began to become all good. The primary individual she said it to was her eldest child Brandon, at that point 18. Brandon had just worked out for himself that the moon arrivals were phony, so I chose to educate him regarding what I'd heard at NASA. He wasn't astonished. Presently 47, a mom of four and living in Phoenix, Arizona, Cindy has as of late turned out to be required with the Flat Earth Movement. Through this, she has found that kindred individuals trust that the Apollo 11 moon landing never happened and that quite a bit of what occurs around NASA is phony. I woke up in 2009 and I found out about all the phony stuff the U.S. government had done and were doing. Around that time, I recollected a specialist at Lockheed Martin, where I worked after I cleared out NASA, revealing to me the Earth was level. I didn't take it genuinely at the time, it was not on my radar. In May of 2016, Cindy saw a YouTube video about the Earth being level. I was extremely astonished, she asserts. I was captivated and begun my adventure. For no less than two weeks, I was in a stupor, inquiring about the subject overburdening my mind with data. Cindy reviewed the photograph lab engineers at NASA snickering about how individuals had confidence in the moon arrivals and that is the point at which she understood reality. Those experts, similar to the lock he built before them, knew the genuine state of the Earth. As Cindy says, they needed to know whether they worked in the photograph lab. The pilots would bring picture takers and take photographs, they more likely than not seen a huge amount of verification. After further research, Cindy has concluded that it's a great opportunity to tell the world. I needed to stand up, she says. It's too enormous a reality to withhold. I was apprehensive at first, stressed over the repercussions so didn't address anybody about it for a considerable length of time. Yet, now I couldn't care less who I lose or steamed at sharing this fact. We are for the most part level earthers, a few people simply don't know yet.